I don't have a funny cold open. I don't have a silly cold open. I don't have a clever cold open for this video. Unless that was it. Greetings one and all and welcome once again to Tom's Hit Parade. It is time for my monthly playlist video in which I talk about the music that I've listened to over the past month just for fun, not for any other purposes relating to my channel, Backtracks, Bargain Back, etc. This is just the stuff that I've listened to for fun. Listening for listening's sake, which we all need in our life uh, quite often actually. Uh, and I, I mentioned in my, uh, if you didn't see my latest t uh, Lunchtime with Tom live stream, that basically served at an, as an unofficial part one of this playlist video because, uh, as you can see from the notepad on which I regularly uh, keep a list of what I've listened to over the past month, for the month of August I listened to quite a bit here. Um, uh, yes, so yeah, I, I couldn't do it all in one video, so I decided, uh, since I had trouble thinking of another topic for Lunchtime with Tom last week, uh, I decided to talk about about a, about a dozen of the CDs that I listened to last month, and here I'm going to talk about about a dozen more, as well as a couple of LPs. Uh, uh, quite a good list here, yeah, and yes, I listened to almost entirely CDs again this month. Yes, the last couple of months my CD player's gotten quite a workout, I guess, and uh, I, I listen to some vinyl as well, but not quite as much as CDs lately. Uh, that, that tends to fluctuate, it comes in waves. Vinyl sometimes takes dominance, and then CDs do from time to time, and I like doing that with my hands just for silly effects, but anyway. Uh, but before I get to the actual playlist proper, uh, I like to talk about whatever might be on my mind. Uh, sometimes there's nothing on my mind <laughs> in a given month, you know. Take that to mean what you will. But uh, this month I'd like to talk about a few of the uh, artists that we've lost over the last couple of months. A couple of them actually uh, have a personal connection to what I what I have listened to and what I do listen to. The first one was uh, a bit of a, a shock to me, a very sad note. Uh, Danish pianist Bent Fabrik. He's a ja jazz pianist. Uh, he was the, at the age of 95. He passed away on July 28th. And this is the album, the only album of his that I have. Uh, this is kind of a uh, Bent Fabrik reinvented. It's almost like a mixtape. But it's you know built on all the all the tracks on here are built on Bent Fabric's original jazz melodies, kind of beefed up for the the new millennium. This put out was put out in two thousand five, I think it was. A fantastic album. I mean, the name of the album, Jukebox. Take that literally. This is just like a, like a jukebox. It's a party on disc here. That's just total party. Uh, fantastic album. But yeah, uh, Bent Fabric is best known for his composition Alley Cat, which you might not know it by name, but uh, you listen to it, you probably will, will recognize it even in some subliminal way. Just uh, yeah, a fantastic artist that I, I have always meant to check out in more detail than just that jukebox CD, which I, I need to do now that uh, now that he is gone, unfortunately. Uh, but yeah, just from that one CD, I have really, I really, really appreciated it. He, he made an impression on me, uh, even though I'm fully aware that may not be his characteristic stuff. Another noteworthy artist who passed away uh, early on in August, actually, August 6th, at the age of 74, was Wayne Fontana. He was the frontman for Wayne Fontana and the Mindbenders, a British invasion group. Uh, two of their biggest hits were The Game of Love and The Book of Love. Uh, great, great hits from the 60s. A uh, fantastic uh, group. I've uh, My sister was a big fan of the British Invasion, and I've got a box set that uh, undoubtedly has several of their hits on it. So yeah, a, another unfortunate loss in the past couple of months in the world of music. And another one that I actually just coincidentally recently mentioned on my own channel in my A to Z series, Trini Lopez passed away at the age of 83 on August 11th. Uh, yeah, I, I, funny that I mentioned that uh, just a couple of months ago, that he was still with us, he was still alive and well. And unfortunately, uh, that is no longer the case. Uh, yeah, and, and this, uh, if you didn't watch that uh, A to Z video, a, a great album here, the folk album by Trini Lopez, and it's really making me want to uh, check check him out in more depth. I haven't had a chance yet, but uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to uh, exploring more of his catalog. And uh, yeah, unfortunately, that is uh, going to be posthumously, because uh, he is no longer with us. And then, of course, the most recent um, death in the world of music was for Justin Towns Earl. He was a uh, an Americana folk rock artist. Uh, he passed away at the age of 38, unfortunately, very, very young. Uh, August 23rd was when he, pa he passed away. And unfortunately, I am not familiar with any of his work. I have never listened to him that I am aware of. 
uh, but he is, uh, I, I, I came to be aware of him. Uh, he is, was actually a kind of a mentor of sorts for an artist that uh, you will probably be hearing me talk about very soon, uh, not in this video, but very soon on my channel, uh, Sammy Brew, um, a young Americana artist who's uh, up and coming, fantastic artist. So uh, yeah, he has a, a connection there to Justin Towns Earl. So yeah, he and he is the son of uh, uh, legendary artist Steve Earl. So yeah, an unfortunate uh, bunch of artist passings over the past couple, couple of months. And now on to the playlist proper for the month of August. And again, if you want to see uh, more of what I listened to in August, check out my most recent episode of Lunchtime with Tom, episode 9, my live stream. Uh, but yeah, I have, as I said a few minutes ago, I have two LPs and about a dozen CDs that I listen to uh, in this batch that I'll be talking about today. Uh, the first LP, I'll do the LPs first. First LP is from a genre that I listen to very little of, and that is show tunes. I am not a huge fan of movie musicals, but one of the few that I do enjoy is the original movie of Annie back in 1982. And this one actually I found on the freebie shelf at House of Records I, uh, just a few weeks ago. I had been kind of looking you know, off and on for this. This wasn't actually on any list that I had. I was just kind of keeping my eyes out for it when I remembered to keep my eyes out for it. And wouldn't you know, it was on the freebie shelf. It's got some surface noise and a few scratches on it. Uh, it does skip on one track, so uh, this will basically be a placeholder until I get a, a better conditioned copy of it. But yeah. This was one of my childhood favorites uh, scores. And this, and I mean, look at the nice uh, gatefold you have here. Funny, funny uh, songs on here, especially by Carol Burnett. Uh, I have a huge uh, sentimental soft spot for Carol Burnett, and it would probably figure that my two favorite songs on here are Carol Burnett songs, Little Girls, as well as Sign, the duet that she does with Albert Finney. And, and yeah, if you have not seen the original movie uh, of Annie by John Huston, a great cast, uh, Albert Finney and Carol Burnett, as I mentioned, Bernadette Peters, and Ranking, Tim Curry is in it, um, and yeah, just a bunch of, of great songs, great uh, performances, yeah, fun, fun musical. And the other LP that I listened to uh, this month, I just found last week at House of Records, uh, it was in their new arrival section, and I actually didn't realize that this had been put out on LP. It is... Optical Race by Tangerine Dream. Now, some of you are probably familiar with Tangerine Dream, at least by name. Uh, they are known for their lush, um, lengthy uh, uh, compositions, very atmospheric, ambient electronica. This, however, is not like that. Uh, this album, as well as its follow-up, uh, Lily on the Beach, are much more, well, pop, just to at least kind of, to kind of you know give it a vague description, uh, shorter compositions, and much stronger on melody and rhythm. So if you're looking for the ambient kind of Tangerine Dream, do not look to their private music label releases, these two. And uh, the one after those two called Melrose, that one was a little bit more back to their uh, their ambient roots. Um, hardcore Tangerine Dream fans will not like these two albums, but I, I love them because this is how I was first exposed to Tangerine Dream's music. And so yeah, these albums hold a lot of sentimental value for me. I've noticed that uh, uh, Lily on the Beach is also available on LP, so I'm going to start looking for that. And possibly, I don't know if that'll make me actually give up the CDs out of my library, just because the CDs actually hold sentimental value to me. And now on to the other CDs that I've listened to. Uh, I've got a couple of uh, three artists that I've listened to two albums by. Uh, ZZ Top is the first one, uh, Afterburner and Eliminator. They're two most successful albums from the late 80s, early 80s, sorry. Uh, yeah, this has these two have all of their big hits on them. Uh, Legs, Sharp Dressed Man, and uh, yeah. Just classic, classic ZZ Top. It's, I'm not a huge ZZ Top fan, but uh, I'm an 80s guy, so they're big hits. I'm, I'm a total sucker for, what can I say? Uh, and then Enya is the other one. Uh, I had Enya's Greatest Hits album, but I found these two at um, a store up in Portland uh, last month, month before when I was up there, in the budget bin. They were just two bucks a piece, so I picked them up. And yes, these two have their, their bigger hits, uh, Orinoco Flow, Caribbean Blue, and probably other ones that I cannot remember and don't have time to read the track listings while the video camera is running. Uh, but yeah, good stuff. Very, very relaxing, atmospheric. Well, yeah, kind of atmospheric. But yeah, if you want to put music on to unwind, Enya is great for that. And then uh, quite the opposite of Enya, we have Lincoln Park. Yeah, <laughs> you can't get more opposite pretty much than Lincoln, than Lincoln Park. But yeah, this is their, their first two albums here, Meteora and Hybrid Theory. Very good stuff. I actually uh, picked up, and uh, because I've enjoyed these two albums so much, 
I picked up their follow-up album, Minutes to Midnight. Is that what it was? Listened to it, but I did not find it nearly as uh, interesting as uh, these two albums. So I did eventually end up uh, trading that one in, sad to say. So yeah, just it just didn't uh, strike a chord with me, pun intended. And then uh, up next is another one I found up in Portland, Soulsville by Huey Lewis and the News. This was the one album of theirs that I was missing. Uh, now that I picked up uh, Weather, their most recent album, uh, a couple months ago. Yeah, this is a covers album. Their second covers album. This is more Motown stuff. Their other covers album, uh, Four Score, no, Four Chords and Several Years Ago, one of the best album titles ever. That was more uh, 50s R&B hits, not necessarily Motown. This much more is in the Motown vein, but yeah, very, very good stuff. And it's Huey Lewis in the News. I mean, come on. And then these next two, I think I picked both of these up in the uh, $1 section in Epic Seconds, a store in downtown Eugene. Uh, and actually, right now, they've got a special going on, a buy one, get one free special. So technically, it's actually the 50 cent section, if you buy enough. Uh, this first one is uh, an album called After Hours, and it's by an artist named Raul Malo. And Raul Malo is the front man for a Tex-Mex rock band called The Mavericks, a kind of a country rock band with a little bit of Latin, Latin influence. Uh, and yeah, they're very good. I've uh, been following them for a while. But yeah, this is uh, his, I think, his third solo album, or maybe second. And this is actually a covers album. It's uh, a, a bunch of uh, Great American Songbook standards, mostly, I think. Possibly some 50s and 60s uh, uh, classics as well. So very good stuff. I, I really enjoy Raul Malo's voice. He's got a nice, mellow kind of voice. Uh, kind of distinctive. Yeah, very enjoyable. And yeah, check out the Mavericks if you haven't yet. If, if you don't mind uh, Latin-flavored uh, country rock, check them out. And then this one is uh, probably something that a lot of people will, rec will recognize. Ben Folds 5, Whatever and Ever, Amen. This is their their breakthrough album. It has uh, Brick as well as Song for the Dumped on it. And uh, yeah, I've, I've been meaning to check out Ben Folds and Ben Folds 5 for quite a while now. Uh, I've, I've, I've been aware of them, obviously, for a long time. And uh, the, the hits on off of this album, obviously, I'm familiar with. But have never bothered checking out the, the band in more depth. And so I've been wanting to do that. So, and uh, that's got me started on doing that. And then uh, next up, I have a soundtrack that I picked up. Uh, yeah, it's about a month ago, I think. And then I think this was actually also at Epic Seconds. Roswell, the uh, classic TV series. This is not the, the one they just made a couple of years ago. That was a reboot. This is the original Roswell series that was done back in the late 90s. This album is copyright 2002. So yeah, I think it was done in the late 90s or right around the year 2000. A great... Uh, series, if you haven't watched it yet. Uh, Dido, Sarah McLaughlin, Coldplay, Zero Seven, Doves, Sheryl Crow, bunch of great stuff on here. And uh, Dido actually did the theme song. It's called Here With Me, the theme song from the TV series. So, yeah. Very good stuff. And then we have what is probably the best bargain that I scored over the past uh, month. Uh, not counting the, uh, the freebie CDs, of course. But uh, yeah, the, the best bargain that I actually paid for. And this was just $5, and it was at House of Records. Uh, the Essential Leonard Cohen. Two CDs worth of Leonard Cohen for 5 bucks. I mean, you cannot beat that. And of course, you know we all know who Leonard Cohen is. Fantastic Canadian folk artist. Uh, and there are a couple of songs on here. I've got one of his studio albums, uh, his first one. And I've been wanting to, for a while now to get a bit more of a, a, t a taste of Leonard Cohen. And this has a few of the songs in here that I've been wanting for a while. I don't think I've ever owned the Leonard Cohen recording of Hallelujah. I've got a couple of cover versions of it, but yeah, now I've got that one. Of, obviously, that one's on here. If one song is going to be on here, it's going to be Hallelujah. And another great song of his that I found out through the movie Pump Up the Volume. It's a fantastic movie starring Christian Slater. I don't think it's available on any, any streaming services, so, so if you can find the DVD, you've got to watch it. It's a great, great movie. But uh, one of the songs that uh, had prominent placement in the soundtrack was Leonard Cohen's recording of Everybody Knows. One of his, I, I don't know if it was one of his bigger hits, but it was. it's a fantastic song. Just, heck, just listen to the song, Everybody Knows, by Leonard Cohen. Its lyrics are very, very apt for today. Yeah, that's all I'll say. Just, just go listen to the song. What can you say about Leonard Cohen that hasn't already been said? Fantastic, fantastic artist. And then uh, these next three CDs are actually courtesy of a very, very good friend of mine who was, uh, I think I mentioned, might have mentioned this in my last playlist video, or I know I mentioned it in some video, uh, recently, he was going through pruning his CD collection and asked me if I wanted a, uh, you know, ran a list of titles by me and asked me if I wanted any of them. And I, I took him up on his uh, huge, extreme generosity and uh, asked for a few titles. And that's what these three are. 
So thank you so much to uh, You Know Who You Are. Uh, first one is Brian Adams, Waking Up the Neighbors. Uh, yeah, segueing from one Canadian into another. Uh, his fourth, fifth album, Can't Stop This Thing We Started. I've always enjoyed that song. And uh, yeah, Everything I Do, I Do It For You is on here. It wasn't just on the Robin Hood Prince of Thieves soundtrack. It was also on this album. Uh, I could take that song or leave it because uh, back when the movie was out, the song was overplayed, played to death on the radio. So yeah, I've, I've, I'm kind of sick of the song, although I think enough time is removed now that uh, I can tolerate it at least. But uh, yeah, back then, I would smash a radio if it played that song, basically. So, Okay, not really, but you get my drift. Anyway, moving on from that one, uh, another CD that he gave me was uh, Rolling Stone's live collection, Flashpoint. Uh, this was done in 91, so it contains a good share of their 80s. Uh, hits from their discography, as well as some of their you know, earlier ones, obviously. But yeah, just a, a great, great selection of live cuts. I, I guess I guess they were in their prime in the 60s, but you know they were pretty good in the, in the 80s too, so you, know, you can't knock them. Hey, the Rolling Stones, what, what can you say, right? And then the last of the three CDs from my good friend here is, no, I'm not Rick Rolling You. It is indeed Rick Astley with his album, Whenever You Need Somebody. And yes, this is the one that has uh, his hit, We're Never Gonna Give You Up, on it. And uh, I, I kind of half expected my friend to Rick Roll me with the CD. You know, send me the CD case, but with a different disc inside it. Uh, but no, he didn't do that. He was, he's just too nice a guy, too, too wonderful, too generous. So yes, this does have the right CD in it. And yes, this has, as I, as I think I just mentioned, it has his hit, Never Gonna Give You Up, on it, which is, of course, a became a ridiculously huge hit and, of course, an internet meme, as we all know. Uh, and, but that one, it was such a huge hit, such a ridiculously huge hit, that it took attention away from a song that I think was just as good, if not better, and is also on this album, Together Forever. Uh, you, you probably don't recognize it by name, but if you, you know, played it and listened to it, you'd probably uh, spring to mind. It. You'd probably be familiar with it. But yeah, a great song all, as well. This is actually a pretty good album. It does kind of sound a little samey, so I can kind of get why Rick Astley basically became a one-hit wonder. But uh, still, I'm, I'm glad to have this CD. I will play it uh, from time to time again. Uh, I have not played it for the last time. So yeah, fun CD by a fun artist. And yeah, uh, Stop giving, never going to give you up all the attention, and uh, give some attention to Together Forever. Check that one out. And then the last CD in my playlist for the month of August is by Bobby McFerrin. This is, I believe, his first album, The Voice. And yet, yeah, Bobby McFerrin was, well, kind of a one-hit wonder, uh, but not in my book. You know, his hit, Don't Worry, Be Happy, was read a huge hit in the 80s, well, kind of like Never Gonna Give You Up was. Uh, and it got probably more attention than, than it deserved, honestly. It got a little corny and, and syrupy. But uh, he's he's an extraordinarily talented, talented artist. This is this marks the fifth or sixth CD I have, and uh, two or three of those were from my sister's collection. So yeah, a fun artist, and uh, one of the uh, uh, or actually two of the tracks that kind of got my attention on here when I looked at the track listing. I think I picked this up at uh, in Portland at one of the stores in Portland in the budget bin. Uh, I'm my own Walkman, which of course you know you know me and songs about music, and the track right after that is actually called Music Box. So. I was bound to like this album, and I did, so yeah. A very fun album by an underappreciated artist, I think, Bobby McFerrin. Well, I guess that just about does it for my playlist for the month of August 2020. And you know what that means? Time to start a new one for September. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, hit that like button and share it with your friends. And give me your thoughts, questions, suggestions, or constructive criticisms in the comment section below. Also, scroll down to the description for the link to my Twitter and Instagram feeds and links to my favorite fellow YouTubers who are all worth checking out. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel and browse my past videos, and be sure to ring that notifications bell so you'll be the first to know each time I drop a new video. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time, and remember, life's too short to be a music snob.